Hello everybody and welcome to another time lapse painting. Thank you for joining me. As you can see this is the final painting. I've called it Sailing at Sundown and it's inspired mostly by those sunsets I got to see while I was camping on the beach at Lake Superior in Michigan. It's a really nice pretty place to be especially during sunset. So I made it an inspired painting about it. Um, here I go sketching in. I just uh, used a couple of reference photos I took during the sunset and the uh, piece them will look really quickly together. And then for the sea I kind of just made it. I've done so many seas now that I kind of just know how to make them. Again with just the light blue, throwing it in there. Later on, I'll end up. Um, what's it called? Uh, blending into blending in a yellow, like I'm doing. Yeah, there you go. A lighter color at the bottom. That's for later. Until then, I'm just gonna throw in the clouds. Using my slightly bigger fan brush, usually I use a smaller one. For this one, I decided I wanted to try it out using my newer and wider one. It worked pretty good. I didn't have any problems with it. I still like my other fan brush more, my smaller one. I've talked about it many times in my other videos. But for this one, I had to try something different. And we're just fine. Nothing to it. And then I went back in with my little millimeter thin round brush. Just to give all the clouds more character. Take some paint in. Add some paint out. I think for this painting I spent about 12 hours on it. It was actually a pretty quick one. Usually it takes me a lot longer, but I don't think more than 12 hours. There's always my head popping in the way. Gotta look down so I can see what I'm doing. clouds. These ones are a little bit more wispy, a little less defined. Then after that it's done I moved down to the sea. Starting with the farthest back point first, using my thin brush just to etch out those little waves. I don't think I've ever seen a sailboat on Lake Superior. I've gone there many times, <clears throat> but I'm sure there were or there are sometimes. It would be quite amazing to own the sailboat and to be able to take it out whenever you wish. Especially one of those kind of like bigger ones, I guess. I'm thinking like the ones that they used, I don't know, 400 years ago, 300 years ago. Like the ones they used maybe like the Revolutionary War or something like that. Excuse me, I have a little bit of cold at the moment, so 
my voice sounds different. Sorry about that. I've decided to call maybe the way I paint texturalism. I'm not sure if that's the best name for it. I've been trying to think of a better way to put it, but as of right now, it seems like a pretty cool way to describe it. Heavy based impasto impasto painting. So after obviously the sea dries up, we're gonna throw some foam on the tops of the waves. I usually add a little bit more than I need, and then once I paint over it with a translucent layer of paint, water down, some water down paint, and once I put that over it, it will blend it in better, so it doesn't look like there's as much foam. You know, for such a calm day, it's pretty rough seas. Ironically, it's a little bit more difficult to paint the calmer sea than a choppy sea. But it also looks cool when it's choppy or moiby, so I don't know. Calm, the calm seas are not as pretty, in my opinion. skip a little bit forward. A lot of this I've, is uh, just a lot of repetitive work in different angles, different ways. I like to listen to different musics and podcasts and audiobooks, so if you ever have any recommendations, please recommend something in the comments. <coughs> It'll be nice to start, try something new. I usually listen to comedians, you know, Cause it's fun to listen to laughs or get laughs in, but yeah, I bet there's some cool podcasts out there too for like learning and you know, current events. It took me a second to figure out what kind of boat I wanted to put there, put in there exactly, or where I wanted to put it too. I was gonna have it on the left side at first. I would have had a I was gonna have a mirror image on the left side, but I decided to have it pointing into from the large. Excuse me. I was gonna have it, yeah, like I said, on the left side, but I flipped mirrored it, and I wanted it to point the same way the clouds are moving. That way, it looks like it's moving with the wind. At least that was my um, rationale in the end. Making a boat is usually the most uh, uh, high attention and concentrated part. I have to make these little adjustments so I make things smooth and keep the shapes just right. So you see, me using this, the thin round brush. Let's try and get all the angles correct. Usually the first layer is just uh, making the shapes, second layer is creating the 3D. Not that I don't do it in the first the, uh, first layer, but I try to more or less fig uh, figure out what the shapes are going to fit on the surface rather than texture. And then the following layers after that, the, t the texture becomes the priority. For this picture, I uh, I just used a, I think I used somebody else's painting as a reference, and then I just kind of changed the sails up a bit. Added, I added another mast. <laughs> Excuse me. And added a third back mast and that front sail that I painted.
If you ever have any questions, just feel free to ask me in the comments. If you want to have any criticisms, although I don't really care about criticisms, they go in, in, in one ear out the other. But unless it's a good one and it has a good tip, then I might listen to it. Usually it's not. I've been doing this for years. It's hard. It's rare to find somebody who can tell me something. Definitely want to one day get on one of these sailboats. Maybe even live on one. And just play in there, paint for a while in the seas, that'd be fun. That'd be a really cool experience. A way to live for a little bit. I get, I'm actually really happy with the way this painting came out in the end. It was, um. <coughs> excuse me. That's the cool one. It was a really quick one. Relatively speaking, to my other paintings, so it usually takes me a little longer and I have to make more decisions. This one kind of came out just the way I envisioned it from the beginning. I wanted a more like colorful sunset, and it came out just the way I wanted it, and I was really happy with it. I think like, one of my biggest goals as I'm painting is I want to be able to like a painting that, like, when I'm done, I'm awed by or surprised by. You know, we are. We are all our worst critics, so it's hard to please myself when it comes to what I make. So I'm hoping one day to make something that I literally truly think, wow, this is amazing. Hopefully one day. There are times when, I, when I'm proud of what I made, but I never like truly uh, feel I created something absolutely amazing. I guess that's the way I painted is something I'm very proud of. Simply because it's so different. I don't think I'm the only person who paints the way I paint, but or uses texture like this. But I feel like I'm the one who uses texture the most that I've seen. Hopefully, one day I'll become my favorite painter. And if you were wondering, I can paint like 2D. With like oils and mixing and blending and all the other ways. I just didn't want to paint like that. It's that was. I wanted to find something new, find my own way of traversing this the 2D space. I also wanted to stay away from being able to be copied by, for example, AI and other people. Uh, be able to, three, uh, to print my work. So I ended up kind of finding this, uh, kind of, kind of stumbling into it, kind of planning into it. I always liked the heavy use of pasta anyway. So I knew I was going to use that at some point. I just didn't know how heavy it would get. <laughs> it's gotten very heavy now. But here we are, adding. The translucent layers, I can see we go kind of quickly through it because it takes like not long at all. And usually I just add more, many, many translucent layers one top of the other. I don't think I even film all of them. I think I only film about 70%, two thirds of the layers I put down when it comes to uh, the translucent layers. Because some of them are just really quick, like. If they're so, some of them are so translucent you won't be able to see it, but you can't tell once it's dry, but not in the video. So I skipped those. You can see I'm adding more cloud lightness, just a lighter purple. It's a little bit of um, iridescent paint. I really like iridescent. Iridescent paint basically is paint that can. Uh, so much change color depending on the angle. It's not. It never really is that way. It's usually just like has gold flakes in it, and it makes it kind of like uh, holographic more than iridescent. But it does look very cool. And here I'm painting the sails gold. 
It's been my go-to color nowadays to paint sails, just a gold color. I used to actually go kind of like a like a beige, beige, yeah, like a very light beige, but that metallic gold looks really cool on sale, so why not? We're almost done. I think the only thing that was left to add after this was the sun, and I'm just kind of painting in the masts here with the dull brown. I mixed way too much brown for this painting, but that's okay. We use it later. Use all paint. Thank you so much for joining me in this painting. If you have any questions again, feel free to ask in the comment section. Comment or criticisms. There it is. Take care.